Greetings, my lovable weirdos! This week, I'm going to show you how I made this craft bone plague mask. And if you want to try making this yourself, learn from my mistakes because I already made them for you. So let's start. You will need... I used the simplified version of this template uploaded by Sarah, aka McTreelith on Tumblr. She's got a quilting pattern of this plague mask as well as a tutorial available online free for anyone to use on her Tumblr account. Cut out and transfer the pattern onto craft foam. And here's where I already made my first mistake. I should have just used black craft foam for this. It would have saved me a lot of time trying to paint this later. I wanted my foam to look like leather, so I did this by crumpling tin foil and pressing the foil onto my foam with my hair straightener, since I don't own an iron. And here's mistake number two. I should have done this before transferring my mask pattern as the heat will warp and shrink the foam. This is already a good start. I started out using super glue to join the edges together, as I find it slightly more forgiving than contact cement. Which was probably a good thing because I quickly made mistake number 3 and joined the wrong seams together. After carefully tearing the seams apart, I had to switch to contact cement anyways because the edges were too rough for the super glue to hold properly. Here you can see how the seams are slightly off because the foam warped. It's not exactly easy breathing through foam. So I decided to poke out a couple of air holes using this triangle template I made so that the holes would be evenly spaced apart. I created the holes with a tiny screwdriver first, and then used a larger one to enlarge them later. I did this because I wasn't sure if the foam would tear if I just went straight for the big screwdriver. Next, I joined the two mask calves together with more contact cement. This part is super fiddly because of the curved edges. If you decide to make this, just be patient and go slowly. I wanted to add a cap to the end of the mask beak to hide the ugly point where all the seams came together. To do this, I stuffed the mask with newspaper so that it would better hold its shape, and then wrapped it in cling wrap and taped the part I needed a pattern for. Then, I drew out the shape of the beat cap and cut it out. Ta-da! You have a pattern! For the eyes, I took the template from the quilting pattern of this mask to cut out foam circles. Then, I sealed the foam with my hair dryer, the same way my hair strainer would have sealed the rest of the mask. Next, I used air drying clay to make rivets. This clay takes 24 hours to cure, so if you want to save time, you can make the rivets out of craft foam instead. I primed all the parts that I wanted to look metallic with a thin layer of Mod Podge. I used a fine synthetic brush to try to minimize the look of brush strokes. I ended up coating them with two coats to try to minimize the look of the seams. Then I painted everything in a base layer of black. Here was where I started thinking I should have just used black craft foam instead of trying to use my scrap pieces of foam. Make sure to paint all the edges of the foam too. After the base coat dried, I dry brushed silver acrylic paint onto the beak cap and eyes. The beak cap ended up needing two coats while the eyes only needed one. I didn't want to cover them completely in silver, just enough for the black to still peek through and the metal to look slightly aged and weathered. Once the silver was dry, I coated them in another layer of Mod Podge. I wanted the mask to have a worn leather look, so I mixed oranges, yellows and browns together with the black and brushed it onto the foam. Then, I used a piece of tissue paper to pat off some of the paint. This was just a personal preference, and I'm not even sure the camera's picking up on the subtle colors. But if you make this yourself, you can save your tissue paper and just keep the mask black if you prefer it that way. This next part is optional, but I decided to make a removable cloth lining so that I can wash and clean the inside of the mask. 
Hygiene is important for a plague doctor. This took me forever because I like using tiny little back stitches. I made the lining out of black cotton because that's what I had. If you've got fabric that's nice and soft, use that. For the eyes, I cut the fabric back into triangles and then sewed that down with the tiniest ever hemming stitches. Because I'm apparently a masochist and like torturing myself with little details. to assemble everything with super glue. To complete the eyes of the mask, I took a $2 pair of H&M sunglasses from an old cosplay and popped out the lenses. Then I taped them down to the inside of the mask and secured the lenses down with foam rings that I cut out using the same eyepiece template. I then used a craft scalpel to lightly score the tape and remove it. Be very careful not to tear the foam when removing the tape. And here's where I realized I had another problem. <sighs> to solve this, I took the leftover foam I had cut up from the eye rings and made another ring that just barely fit inside the eye pieces. Yay, problem solving! I actually really like how this ended up looking. And because I hadn't tortured myself enough with this build, I decided it needed some stitches. Did I mention I love tiny, unnecessary details? To make the thread look weathered and to hide the colored foam that got exposed during the sewing, I smeared on more orange, yellow, and black acrylic paint mix onto the thread. Touch up the paint wherever you need to. Next, I had to figure out where to put the snap buttons to make the lining removable. there's always the possibility of ripping the foam, I had to be very careful every time I remove the lining. Then I had to figure out where to place the ribbons to secure the mask onto my head. I put the ends of the ribbons so it won't fray. It's one of the few tips and tricks I remember from ballet class. To hide where the ribbon connected to the mask, I made little letter details using leftover foam. And there you have it, a Plague Doctor mask. Don't forget to thumbs up, and if you're new here, subscribe! And I just want to take this time to thank you all for helping me reach 200 followers on Instagram. I know it's not a lot to most people, but it's a lot to me. So to celebrate, I've got a special announcement. Head over to my account at TillyCXC and check out my post about this Tinker Tuesday to see the announcement.
I've also got other DIY pictorials in my story highlights and pictures of my Transformation Thursdays on my feed. Until next time, wear a mask, social distance, and keep on embracing your inner weirdo. Bye!